What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Take two. It's gonna be take two of this video, because you know what? It turns out the first time I was recording, wrong mic. Using the wrong mic, sounded like a robot. So uh, I guess I gotta practice running. You know, life life could be could be worse. That's the worst thing that happens today. So we're gonna start off this video with the stat of the day. We ended last video with the stat of the day. We're gonna open this one. If you remember yesterday's, or maybe you didn't watch yesterday's and you just want to guess and pause the video after I say it. Which team had two wide receivers in the top five in yards per reception? It was the Lions. Detroit Lions with Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones was not Golden Tate because, of course, he does not catch deep targets. Today's, today's stat of the day. What two running backs? You have to give me both. So if you, if you have a guess of one, well, that doesn't help because you need to guess both of these guys. What two running backs had a top five overall grade last season and are being drafted in the middle round? So I, de I define middle rounds as like four through nine. So they're being drafted rounds four through nine, fantasy football calculator, PPR scoring, top five overall grade. So that counts their like, they're rushing, they're receiving, they're blocking, I guess their penalty, but that doesn't really factor in much. Top five overall grade at the running back position, rounds four through nine. Tony Mann was the one that got, no, I apologize. I looked at the wrong line. Tony Mann, you got the offensive line pressures. It was Houston. Logan Devine, by two minutes, got yesterday's. Let's see who can get today's stat of the day. Remember, you have to give me both. On to the video, when to reach. Now, I already talked about the early rounds yesterday, so I don't want to go deep into that. I want to go deep into the later rounds in this one. But I do want to rehash it because I know not everyone sees every video. If you want a deep understanding of that early round draft strategy, I'm sure you can find on the channel. It's the one right next to this one. What I want to first talk about with that is an exception. I had a great comment yesterday. Does this change in eight team leagues? Absolutely it does. Early round strategy changes in eight team leagues and reaching does as well. You should draft Gronk if you're in an eight team league. That's just how it goes every single year. Doesn't matter what happens, the optimal pick is to draft Gronk in an 18 league. And I suggest you try and grab Gronk and Rodgers because you need something to set yourself apart. So if you need to reach around ahead wherever Gronk goes in 18 leagues, I don't know where he goes, but reach, get him, get him on your team because everyone's going to be stacked. Even if you draft Gronk and Rodgers, your team will be stacked. It's an 18 league. Everyone's going to be good. So you got to find a way to differentiate yourself. So I wanted to touch on that there in general because that's different in a 10, 12, 14 and on. You do not reach more than a few spots in the first four rounds. When I say a few spots, five or six. I mean, five, five or six I'm, I'm perfectly fine with. Even if if you really wanted to reach five or six spots in the first round, I'm the kind of person that's okay with that. Now, you shouldn't be reaching rounds ahead, like first into the third, second into the fourth, third into the fifth. Like more than a round. That should not happen. These guys are ranked highly for a reason. Rankings are pretty darn accurate for the first four rounds. That's why they have such a high hit rate. But let's say you're at the nine pick and you want to reach to 15. If you want to do that, you can do it. Don't remember yesterday's video. Don't do it just because you need a certain position. Don't lock yourself into that box of saying, I need a wide receiver. This is the next one. He's six spots ahead. I have to take him. No, take the value. But if the guy that you just need on your team is six spots from the second round into the third, just take him. Take them because rankings are subjective anyways. For you to think that the experts that make these rankings are using some like complex machine learning algorithms, they are not. You can use machine learning algorithms to, to, to use which metrics are better at predicting. So, so building a model that says, hey, these metrics have a better predictive power than other ones, you can do that. But there is a lot of subjectivity that goes into rankings and people just estimating target share, estimating workload. It's all an estimate. A lot of estimates go into rankings. I want to emphasize that. So if you think that the estimate is off, then act on that. That's how you win. That's how you win leagues is by being contrarian. So first four rounds, you don't go massively outside of these rankings because they're pretty accurate for the first four rounds. But once you get into the 5th and 6th, that changes. 5th and 6th rounds, you can reach within these rounds. 
So you're in the fifth round, you want to reach late sixth, go for it. Honestly, I extend early seventh kind of into this. So if you're in the early sixth round and it's like the mid to early seventh round, that's fine. Wherever you want in those rounds because the hit rate drops off and the talent is kind of the same. If you're going to tell me that a fifth round talent is much better than a sixth round talent, I'm like, okay, let's be honest for a second. Half the time, sites rank people differently anyways. You go on Yahoo, you want NFL, you want ESPN, a sixth round pick might be a fourth round pick in some of these other ones. So it's all depends on the site, which is why we recommend you mock draft on different sites to kind of get a feel. We recommend Fantasy Football Calculator, we recommend Fantasy Pros, recommend SleeperBot because those are neutral and those kind of build off those sites. But you should be mock drafting, obviously, when your draft is about to come on, on the site that you're going to use. But fifth and sixth round, wherever you want to reach inside that, that does not matter. Let's say let's say you're in like the the, the early sixth round. Guys like, I don't know, uh, Tevin Coleman, Marlon Mack. Those are kind of like the guys that are going roughly in that range, I guess. You see, um, you see Coleman and you say, no, I just, I don't like the workload. I don't like the volume. He does have upside, but I don't like the sickle cell. You just don't like the pick. That's fine. Don't take it. Marlon Mack, well, okay, you're, you're concerned there's other running backs they drafted. You're concerned about the shoulder surgery, that he's not out there right now. I mean, I don't know when you're watching this. He could be out there, but right now he's not. Don't take him. If you have concerns, don't take him. Be comfortable with your picks. You look at Karrion Johnson, you say, oh, he's around behind them. Now, I don't think there's a hole because I love Karrion Johnson. We love him on this channel. But you see Karrion Johnson around ahead, and you're like, well, I can't reach on him. No, 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 no. Reach on the players you want. Build a team of players you like. Fantasy football is a game that's supposed to be fun. And typically, when you like players, it's because you heard things that you like about them and that they're good picks. Now, I'm not telling you to be in the sixth round and draft into the ninth and tenth rounds. That's foolish. You could get those picks in the eighth round. You can reach then. As soon as you start reaching rounds and rounds ahead, it adds risks to those players because now they have to perform better in that value. Think about the example I showed yesterday. So if you're in the sixth round and you draft someone in the tenth, they have to return sixth round value, which is much harder. Because let's be honest, there's a reason they're going in the 10th round. They already have risk, and you're adding on to that risk? Not smart. But if you're in the early 6th round, and you see a guy in the 7th round, like Karrion Johnson that we love, take him. Reach on the players that you really like. Once you get into the 7th, I personally say reach within reason. So like I just said, you're not reaching into like the 14th at this point within reason. But if you see a guy that maybe you think a league mate might also like, that's maybe two rounds back, take them. Just take the guy. Take the players that you like. Once you hit the 10th round, wherever you want regardless of ADP. Because remember our strategy. Remember, I assume normal settings. So I assume two running back, two wide receiver, a flex, a tight end, all that, all that stuff. Like six bench spots. So you're looking at about 15 rounds. Remember, we say defense and kicker are 15th and 14th rounds. We don't like drafting defense and kicker, but I know that a lot of sites force you to draft them. So if you're forced to draft them, you take them in the last two. We know that we take quarterbacks late, so that's like your 10th or 11th or 12th round pick, only one, but it's one of those. So there's only a few picks that you can really make. So if you're in the 10th round and you're taking a quarterback in the 12th and a defensive kicker in the 13th or in the 14th and 15th, well, now you only have your 10th, 11th, and 13th round picks for late. So if you're in the 10th and you see a guy that's going in the 14th, don't be afraid to take him. Don't think about that value because there's really only so many shots you have. And let's be honest, there is not a difference really between the 8th and like the 12th, 13th, 14th rounds. The hit rate from rounds 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is pretty much the same. It is om almost identical for running backs and wide receivers. Now I'm going to get to that in a second, the difference in positions. But don't think that if you're reaching from like the ninth round to the 12th round that you're getting uh, a, a much worse player and just such less odds. You're really not. History shows us that you're going to drop, drop half of your picks anyways. So take the guy that you like. That's the number one piece of advice I give people is take the guy you like within reason. Remember, if you think you can wait another round, you're pretty confident you can. If you think the risk is worth it, wait that extra round. Because it's all about acquiring the most guys you like. And if you start reaching too far, then you're not going to be able to get all of the guys you like. And we'd like to make a team 
where we pick all of the guys that we like. I will be going over late round strategy again in August, but I wanted to touch on it here just because A, it's going to be a month. We'll make that an update video. We'll give you an update on the players that we really like, but also it kind of ties into this video. Um, but I wanted to mention two things about that strategy as it ties into reaching. And one is we're shooting for upside. So make sure that you're not reaching on a player that you like because he's on a team you like. Or make sure you're not reaching for a player you like because he always gets you, you know, 10. He always gives me 5 for 50. And I just like having that on my bench. No, 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 no. That's not the kind of player we're reaching for here. We're reaching for upside. There's no reason to draft a guy like Deshaun Jackson, a guy who we know what his role is, we know what his ceiling is, we know how frustrating it is to have him on our team, we know what he provides us. Deshaun Jackson is a best ball play. He's a DFS play. He's not a season-long play. But people will draft him. People will draft him in PPR leagues. They have him on, on their bench. He'll go off some weeks. He'll have, he'll have probably a 102 touchdown week. Just someone will hit him deep, whoever the quarterback is that week. And it's going to be frustrating. It's going to be frustrating to own a guy like Deshaun Jackson, and we know that. Don't draft a guy whose upside we know. I like players like that, but if you want to draft a player like that, draft Martavis, Martavis Bryant, who has a floor of like zero. I mean, the dude could be suspended for like the whole season. Given the amount of times he's been suspended, you know, Goodell could do whatever he wants to this guy. So you could drop him by week two, sure. But you're going to drop most of your team anyways. Let's be honest. You're going to drop a lot of your team anyways. So take a guy like Bryant, who has a ton of upside. Take a guy like Doxon, who has a ton of upside. Could he stink like he has for like his whole career disappointing us? Sure, that could happen. But if that does happen, it's week four, and you realize you don't want him on your team anymore, drop him for whoever's hot on waivers. But if you have a guy that is just getting you points and is involved in the offense, but you know that doesn't have the upside, it's going to be harder to drop that player. Draft a guy like Kenny Galladay who might need a little bit of injury luck, but honestly, he could just break out and just be awesome regardless. He's going to see the field a lot anyways. So I, th that's just what I wanted to talk about um, for reaching, is that you're reaching for the right players. You're not reaching for a guy with no ceiling. You're reaching for pure upside, the guys who have massive upside. There aren't a ton of them late. If you find a guy late that has a ton of upside, you can reach for him. Perfectly fine doing that. With regards to positions, remember we talked about yesterday. I prefer drafting running back early wide receiver middle rounds, and then filtering in your tight end quarterback defense kicker late, but also in within that is the rest of your running backs. I like doing those late. Why? Well, because the hit rate's essentially the same, but if you hit on a wide receiver late, it's really only hit as in like 25th best, 27th best, 30th best, 25th best. Like it, it's, I think I said that twice, but you know what I mean. You're hitting technically for the metric, but it's not that valuable to your team. It's not that easy to find a wide receiver late that just dominates. We see an injury happen to Allen Robinson. What happens? They spread the ball around. We see Des Bryant go down. What happens? They spread the ball around. But what would happen if Leonard Fournette went down? What would happen if Ezekiel Elliott went down? Rod Smith, Jaron Grant, those guys would win leagues. If Zeke goes down, Rod Smith will be on the championship roster. That's just how it's going to work. That's why guys like Tim Hightower, Trakendrick West, Spencer Ware, Rob Kelly, Jordan Howard, last season's Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, Kenyon Drake. Those guys are on championship rosters because you took a shot late and you had a ton of opportunities early to just hit on a few guys. Because remember, like I said yesterday, your odds of hitting a ton early aren't that great either. It's a difficult thing to do in drafting a lot of players that hit. But if you hit on a few guys early and you just get that one running back late, you're setting your team up for success. And by taking high upside players that have a low floor, it's easier to cut them when a Jamal Williams, Kenyon Drake, and Kamara come up on free agency. So we're not looking for... I'm not looking for a scat back late that I know has no upside. I know I've said Hines I like late, but sort of players like him, if, if you're looking for a ton of upside you're not really drafting that player. If you're looking for championship upside that you're going to draft drop right away if it doesn't work out, it's Chase Edmonds, it's Rob Kelly, and I'm talking about like the last round here. Chase Edmonds, Rob Kelly, um, or John Kelly, and Rod Smith. Guys like that have a ton of potential if there's an injury. 
But in the last round, something were to happen to DJ and Gurley and Zeke, these guys step up and they win leagues. Now, I'm not saying you can't draft Hines. I'll be drafting Hines in a few leagues. But if we are looking for massive upside, like we should be late, it's guys that actually have a chance at being that three down back or have a chance at taking over that starting role from an injury. And Hines, as much as I like him, even with an injury, can't do that. It's those scat backs you need to be a little bit careful of late in drafts. I know we all love to draft the Cohens and the Theo Riddicks, you know, and the Chris Thompsons, but they don't really have a path to a lot of carries, even if an injury happens. That's why I don't really advocate for Duke Johnson's and Theo Riddicks and Tariq Cohens, because sure, they're going to get you some points every week, and if you're going RB0, it's an option. But it's not the greatest option because they're not going to win you leagues. If Carlos Hyde gets hurt, then Chubb takes over, not Duke Johnson. You know, so it, it, you can't just look at the third down back and say, oh, first guy got hurt, now he gets a ton of carries. No, there's a reason he's a third down PPR satellite back. There's a reason for that. It's his body structure. It's his skill set. They just can't handle a workload a lot of the time. So I just wanted to touch on that there. Um reach on the right players for upside late, reach on the right positions. Remember, I like running backs super late and super early, not as much in the middle rounds, although we will be going over our favorite targets at each position. Remember, the premium rankings have targets at each position in the draft, so there are definitely running backs I'll take early. But to wrap this video up, early, five or six spots, that's it. Don't, don't be reaching too far. When I say early, it's like first four rounds. When you're in the fifth and sixth round, reach within those. You can reach into the seventh, but don't reach too far out of that. Once you hit the tenth round, reach wherever, wherever you want to reach for that player that you really want. Don't leave the draft regretting not reaching. You're not going to lose your draft because you reached a round ahead in the tenth round. That has never happened to anyone in the history of fantasy football. It has never happened. No one has lost their league because it was the 10th round and they reached into the 12th round. People can lose their leagues if it's the first round and you reach into the third round. That can happen. I don't think anyone can lose their league at the draft, but you can seriously set yourself back reaching early and not getting as much draft capital as you should. But once you hit that 10th round, really once you hit that like 8th, 9th round, take the players that you want. Take the players you like. Take the players you've researched and you know in your heart, you know, you've seen the metrics, you think they're going to produce, reach on them. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, how about we hit that like button? If you're new, how about we subscribe? Thanks for watching.